What are some double standards that don't involve gender? Story one. In my freshman ELA class, our teacher put my best friend and me next to each other. This was a teacher who was very monotone, like it was never interesting to go to her class. I was trying to be a good student, but one day she yelled at me for a dumb reason I can't recall. This teacher also really liked my friend. So we decided how double standard she was. She had a strict policy of not putting your head down in her class, which is dang near impossible to do. She would just randomly tell us to read from our library books when she didn't feel like teaching. With this knowledge, me and my friend decided to put her to the test. Recall we are right next to each other. We both, in the exact same way, put our heads down on our arms. She walked around the opposite side of the classroom thinking we wouldn't see her. She finally showed up behind us. That's when she tapped on my desk, stood in awkward eye contact in silence, and said, keep your head up and read very sternly. After this, she walked away. Within a second or two, my friend and I died of laughter as she turned around and yelled at us for talking during reading time. This isn't the only time we've done this. Ugh. Teachers having, like, really obvious preferences for certain students does bug me. Like, everyone's human. You're going to obviously like certain people more than you like other people. You can't escape that part of nature. But when it's that obvious... It's just so frustrating. So, I don't know. I say if you're if you're still in that class, which I'm guessing probably not, but if you are, keep messing with her. Story 2. As a gay man, I find it really hard to be taken seriously in a professional environment. I make one joke and I'm the office clown, the gossip, the flaming queen. But my straight peers in the office get a quick laugh and back to work. I've noticed it everywhere I work. People apply this expectation that gay men are there for comic relief. This can be advantageous at times, but when you're actually trying to get a valid work point across, it can be infuriating. There's been times where I felt I could be listing Holocaust victims and people would be cackling telling me I'm too much because that's all they know slash have seen of how to interact with homosexuals, particularly homosexual men. I've read up I've reached a point where I stay as quiet as possible in working environments unless addressing work head on. I think this is because of Hollywood. The way Hollywood portrays gay men is horrible. They are always very flamboyant and are pretty much only given comedy roles. You almost never see gay characters that have serious roles in TV shows or movies. I think it has a serious effect on how people perceive gay people. I'll say, I think this has been getting better as time has gone on. We've seen... A lot just, you know, better representation and not this one specified kind. But it absolutely still is a thing. Um, it's carried over especially from the 90s and early 2000s where shows were trying to be like, hey, we support gay people, but also the butt of so many jokes and like sitcoms and stuff was basically, this person is gay. <laughs> like, that was the whole thing. And yeah, like, the flamboyant stereotypes. I know flamboyant gay guys. They're wonderful. I know gay guys who are just absolutely stoic and serious and like woodworking and stuff. That People come in all shapes and sizes, and it sucks when you get pigeonholed like that. Story 3. Charities for kids get funding. Clean water for kids, clothes for kids, food for kids, AirPods for kids. But try to get funding for adults. Kids are seen as innocent, but adults just need to stop being lazy and get a job. Adults sometimes get stuck in impossible situations through no fault of their own. Having a job isn't a guarantee that nothing bad will ever happen to you. We'd have less kids in need if we helped the adults and their families and communities. The other one is drug addicts. Everyone says they should get clean, and they should, but people treat drug addicts in recovery just as bad or worse. No one wants treatment clinics in their neighborhood. It's hard to get a job already, and if you have to go to the clinic every day, people find out that you're in recovery, getting off drugs, and they don't want to talk to you. I work with people in recovery, and there's so many hoops to jump through just to get and keep treatment services. I think that anyone who wants to get clean deserves support and respect. It's a very tough road. Story 4. 
I always find it amusing that when I purchase chemicals for my company, I can order some real crazy crap, or stuff that can be used to do, make, or synthesize crazy crap without raising an eyebrow or having to submit documentation or business records because, hey, we've got an account, so it must be legit. But when I order good old 99.9% .9 ethanol, which is really cheap for us because it's tax exempt, since we're using it for industrial purposes rather than drinking it for entertainment, there's a mountain of additional paperwork attesting to the above. At my workplace, we don't have to question some of the things people buy. We do try to anyway if they're sketchy folks, though. But on things like acetone, there's a long form that people need to fill out when they could just go to a dollar tree up the road and get the same strength stuff for roughly the same price at the same quantity without all the hassle. Story 5. A good friend and co-student and I are in very similar situations. We both started studying medicine after eight years of working in the same hospital. He's married, I live with my girlfriend, we both have to take the train about an hour, 45 minutes for me, one hour for him, to get to our university. We both had a lot of problems in our first year, especially with chemistry and biology. I recently asked to have one subject shoved into a later year so I have more time to study anatomy and other important subjects and refresh my knowledge of chemistry to then be ready for biochemistry, a subject most med students struggle with. I was able to change my entire curriculum the way I wanted, granted having to study one or two semesters longer because I have a three-year-old kid. They told him that his situation is not severe enough to grant him to study longer than usual, even though it could easily mean he won't be able to fulfill his dream. I mean, there is no doubt that having a child in your life is a big extra responsibility. I have no kids, and I know that my friends who do have kids, they've got so much more to deal with. Uh, there's no point in that kid's life where they're not dedicating a bunch of their time. And so I get that mindset, but I mean, just having that strictness when it comes to med school and like someone, like what this person is going through, it genuinely really isn't fair. And that just kind of sucks that it's all because this person doesn't have a kid from the way this looks. Story 6. Rabbits and any other pet. I had a black mini Rex and she was the most intelligent rabbit I've ever had. She was litter trained, did tricks like standing up, kisses, and came when you called her name only as long as she felt like it. But whenever I talk about her to people like they talk about their dog or cat, people look at me like I'm mad. People always ask each other about how their dog or cat is but start talking about a rabbit and they lose complete interest. When I told them how much I spent on the vets a few times, she's been ill, I've had some people say, why don't you just get a new one? Because it's a living thing. Another rabbit we got from a pet store turned out she had some problems, and the manager of the store said, why don't you return her and swap her for another one? Uh, how about frick off? She's a living creature that didn't ask to be here. Some people need to understand that there is a lot more to rabbits than meets the eye. Story 7 when I was a little kid, I left my toys out and one of my parents stepped on one and I got yelled at for leaving my toys all over the place. But if my parents left their tools out and I stepped on one, I got yelled at for not watching where I was stepping. The world is so complicated and confusing until you realize the people in it are imperfect. It really clicks when you realize a lot of them are really dumb as well. Story 8. When I went to Japan, I was heckled by my friends if I went and had American food. Yet when the same group of friends went out with Japanese guests here in the States, we always only went out to eat Japanese food. Story 9. I have lots of experience, like they are asking, but the employer thinks I'm too old for the job. This just makes me sad. Story 10. My parents say that our generation only does stuff so that we can take a picture and post it. And then whenever we go do something, my parents take a ton of pictures so that they can post them. It's funny. We've seen this kind of transition where, yeah, parents were always like, oh, get off your phones or get off the, you know, quit playing your little games and stuff and actually socialize. And I swear to God, more and more as I've gone to like family birthday parties and functions and stuff like that i see the kids running around playing having fun and all the adults sitting there just like oh did you see this 
Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Total switch of things. And I hate it. Get off your phone, Mom. <laughs> oh, my mom's great. Story 11. Employers who expect you to stay late for hours of overtime on their whim, but get mad if you're even five minutes late in the morning. If I'm flexible for them, I think it's fair to be flexible for me. Such a nitpicky thing to destroy morale when it's already so bad from being forced to work late. Luckily, that was my old job and I'm in a better place now. I'm lucky my boss doesn't kick up much of a stink about me as long as I work my hours and get my work done. I haven't got to work on time in over two weeks. I finished early every day and my boss said I'm doing a good job. Thanks. I enjoyed my sleep and an afternoon nap. Story 12. Bad parents on their kid versus other people's kids. Story 13. Cities and states are telling us to conserve water by watering less. Some people comply and they end up getting fined by their city for having a dead or dying lawn. City and state buildings have the greenest lawns around because they water round the clock, early morning, high noon, and in the evening. Half the sprinklers are usually overspraying in the middle of the road, and of course, water rates go up because the waterworks are selling less water, but expenses are the same. Story 14. Celebrity overdoses. Such a tragedy. Addiction is a disease. Anyone else overdoses? Friggin' junkie. What did they expect would happen? Poor and weird equals weirdo. Rich and weird equals eccentric. Story 15. Pretty people get away with a lot more than ugly people. Story 16. No one cares if you're reading a book slash newspaper and not talking to anyone. Do the same thing on your phone, though. Story 17. I'm genuinely expected to give two weeks' notice if I'm going to be quitting a job. However, if said job wants to get rid of me, they can do it with absolutely no notice, and often with a BS reason. Look... I can understand giving two weeks notice if you're leaving a, go a job on good terms and you got friends there and stuff and you don't want to le leave them in the lurch and stuff like that. Sure. Um, but I don't think people are under any obligation to give two weeks notice to plenty of jobs out there because, yeah, they will not do the same for you. Um, unless apparently you're like McDonald's now has a policy where they're saying that you can't up and quit or I'm sure there are penalties for it, uh, probably concerning your paycheck or whatnot, and that's garbage. Um, I'm not going to get in a rant about that as much as I want to. This comment's too long. Quick, the next story before I go off. Screw you, McDonald's. Story 18. Respect is earned. I deserve respect. Disrespect is earned. Story 19. If I finish a 9-to-5 and want a glass of wine after work to relax, that's perfectly normal. If I'm working a night shift and want a glass of wine after work to relax, I must have a drinking problem because it's 8 a.m. and I'm opening a box of rosé. You're supposed to drink Bloody Marys before 10 a.m. Once the clock has four numbers on it, all bets are off. Story 20 the need to respect your elders even when they abuse that privilege and treat young people disrespectfully. If you want respect, you need to show respect, something I saw a number of years ago. Sometimes people use respect to mean treating someone like a person, and sometimes they use respect to mean treating someone like an authority. Problems exist because of the two different meanings. You always hear old people talking about how, oh, young kids need to show respect, oh, respect this and that, oh, they're so rude. I have worked in customer service and sales in a number of industries and consistently the most polite respectful people that i've encountered are young adults and teenagers extremely respectful not all of them there are some real d-bags of course but overwhelmingly most of the most disrespectful rude ungrateful people that i encounter have been people who are at least 20 plus years older than me. And it is infuriating because they're the generation that goes off about how rude people are and they've got the biggest problem with it. I'm sorry, boomers. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've ever just 
outright called someone boomers, but I did it. <laughs> Story 21. Old enough to join the military and go to war, but not old enough to buy a beer. In California, they aren't old enough to smoke either. Story 22. Student athletes at most D1 schools can get away with almost anything academically, but any other student having so much as a slip of paper out on a closed book test gets reamed by the school. I've mentioned this before, but when I was in high school, a member of the football team got caught having intercourse with a girl in the bathroom. She was expelled. He got three days suspension. You can argue that there's a gender element at play here, and there may be, but I suspect that if it wasn't an athlete but just some average schmo, they'd both be out of there. Story 23. Professors will have very strict due dates on students, but will wait until the last week of the semester to finally give back our grades from our first presentation. Yep, just had this happen. Class ended, the entire school had final grades due by Monday night. They didn't show up until Wednesday. Some people walked at graduation without knowing if they passed their final classes or not. Story 24. Laws for rich people versus everyone else. Laws for cops versus everyone else. Laws for politicians versus everyone else. The law, in its majestic equality, forbids rich and poor alike to sleep under bridges, to beg in the streets, and to steal their bread. Story 25. As someone with anorexia, when I tell people about what I've gone through and my struggles, people are often sympathetic and say I'm strong for fighting. My peers with binge eating disorder are often met with recommendations to go to the gym, just don't eat, and disgust or judgment for being lazy. It's all the same emotional struggle, yet the level of support is so freaking different. Hey folks, um, be it anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder, um, any eating disorder is serious. And if you or someone that you know is struggling with something like that, talk to someone that you can trust, a therapist, parent, a close friend, um, whatever you need. And don't be shy about seeking help. That stuff, um, it, it has very seriously affected people I know. Um, and it has uh, affected me in the past. And no matter what you're struggling with, eating disorder-wise, um, it never feels good to have that kind of stuff just, like, dismissed. And so... Sorry, I'm, um, but it's okay to talk to someone that you can trust and, you know, whatever body you're in, it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. You know, what matters is being healthy and eating disorders are not going to let you be healthy. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I've got pause the recording for just a moment Whew, okay <clears throat> sorry need a little bit of a moment after that because most of these are not that serious but i i take eating disorders very seriously story 26 at my old job there was this lady in her 50s who would say whatever was on her mind even making fun of the managers or policies during meetings for everyone to hear Yet I, 22 female, say one sassy thing and I need to learn to watch my mouth. Yep, seems fair. Tenure does tend to count for a lot. In the military, an E7 or higher can dish a smackdown to a green officer with varying degrees of tact that would earn an E3 or below an immediate Article 15. Story 27. 18 to 20 year olds are developed, mature, and intelligent enough to vote, sign themselves up for thousands of dollars of debt in the name of education, join the workforce, and fight and maybe die in the military, but they can't drink alcohol, smoke, or gamble because they're too underdeveloped, immature, and ignorant. If you live in the US. I'm in Australia, and at 18, you're legally allowed to do pretty much all adult things. Story 28. Oldest children never get away with anything, but they see their younger siblings not getting punished for the same thing they would have been excoriated for. I'm the oldest of three, and I get punished for stuff my siblings did. 
Heck, I get punished for desperately trying to prevent my siblings from doing something dumb or trying to fix whatever they had already done. As an oldest child, I can 100% confirm this. I didn't even grow up in a terribly religious household with my mom. We never went to church uh, in her house. And she wouldn't let me see The Nightmare Before Christmas when I was like eight or nine years old. Uh, <laughs> because oh, it looked too demony and scary. <laughs> and so I wasn't allowed to see it at eight or nine. Years later, my younger brother is in the living room and I look and he's like 10 or 11 years old at the time and watching the movie Hannibal with Anthony Hopkins, a rated R mur movie about a cannibal murderer. <laughs> and I go to my mom and I'm just like, my brother, he's watching Hannibal right now. Did you know that? And she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I told him he could. <laughs> and that's like the tip of the iceberg for that stuff. Story 29. If a dog doesn't like someone, that person's character is questioned immediately. But if a cat doesn't like someone, the cat's just a butthole. Have had dogs and cats, love them both, so not looking to start a cats versus dog argument. Story 30. Managers berating you for doing a bad job when they have absolutely no idea how to do your job. Classic. Managers manhandling your job description. If they can't find something wrong, they don't believe they are doing their job. Same people have no idea who they are outside of work. Story 31. Kids are wrong no matter how right they are, and adults are right no matter how wrong they are. Also, how respect works. Kids are not punching bags. You respect them if you want them to respect you. Nah, the truth is, everyone is wrong. Story 32. For some reason, it's okay to binge watch TV slash Netflix all day, but I spend the same time playing video games and I'm wasting my life. So, true story. Uh, later in my life, when I was a teenager, living with my dad and stepmom, um, there were limits on how much video games I could play and, like, strict. I think I had a PlayStation 1 in my room at the time, and I would play for literally, like, 20 minutes and my stepmom would come around and be like, okay, I think uh, that's, that's enough video games for today. Uh, we should do, a, you know, family stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. okay. And family stuff could consist of, oh, I don't know, uh, quiet, silently watching NASCAR for two and a half hours. Because that was better than engaging with a video game. <laughs> it's... So frustrating. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that. Also, my stepmom and dad are wonderful. They're so sweet and delightful. Like, that was, like, the one tiny complaint I could have about that. So, don't think that they were bad. Story 33. When you burn a body at a crematorium, you're doing a good job. But if you burn a body at your house, you're destroying evidence. Yeah, but you only run into that double standard once or twice a month. Story 34. If the government owes you money, it can send you your refund any damned time it wants to. If you owe the government money, you can bet there will be interest and penalties added. If the IRS holds on to your money too long, they will pay you interest, and the IRS will charge you tax on that interest. Story 35. Rich people are above the law. Story 36. Being rich in the legal system versus public defender. Also, every state pays prosecutors far more than public defenders, so no, you will never be entitled to a fair defense if you are poor. Story 37. Workplace. Some people could almost get away with murder. Some actually do. Story 38. Boomers grew up in and greatly benefited from a society that had lots of social programs, and now they are trying to get rid of all of them. Story 39. It's okay for old people to be bigoted and close-minded because they grew up in a different time, whereas young people are just considered ignorant a-holes, which is why I refuse to acknowledge he's just set in his ways as an excuse. No, he's just stubborn and refusing to change. 
Now, if they have a legitimate memory problem like Alzheimer's or dementia and aren't in their right mind, that's different. They actually cannot help that. People like to, you know, throw around, it's like, oh, well, that, you know, back in their day, that was okay. Back in their day, that may have been socially acceptable, but it wasn't okay. It never felt great. You know, using racist terms and stuff like that, slurs and whatnot, you know, they became so taboo and bad because they were always bad. <laughs> I mean, at least to some degree. I'm no linguist, but come on. Like, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you there. Like, if they've got dementia, Alzheimer's, it's like, well, they're, gonna, they're not going to learn new stuff. But I've known plenty of older people who have been able to grow and learn with the times. No problem whatsoever. I've known 80-year-old people who were super supportive about trans people when they didn't understand what it was five years ago or whatever. I mean, it ain't hard, old folks. It's not hard. Story 40. When you're not trying to enjoy being single, people just say to learn to enjoy being single. When you actually start to enjoy being single, people ask, what's wrong with you for not wanting to look for a relationship? Story 41. People giving advice they don't follow. Story 42. Spending an hour playing a video game as a kid is a bit much and will melt your brain. Meanwhile, the parent saying it has been in front of the TV for the last four hours. Worst of all, one hour of those four hours was watching advertisements. Story 43. People will have a drink or two every single night because they need it to relax and it's fine because it's at night. But if I open a drink at 3 p.m. as my first drink in a week because it's my day off, I clearly have a problem since I'm day drinking. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.